Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're looking at something pretty major in aviation. Happened just yesterday, actually. Yeah, a really pivotal moment. We're talking about an EV tool flight. Uh, that really feels like a historic marker. And our mission today is to kind of unpack what this means, you know, for air travel's future, and especially for getting that crucial FAA sign-off. Definitely. And let's lock in that date, August 15, 2025. Remember that one? Yeah. Looking through the sources, it's clear this was a, well, a monumental achievement for Joby Aviation, really pushing things forward. We'll be uh, taking runway 29 shortly. There's one side of the runway. If you like our videos and you want to support our channel, you can buy me a coffee. Scan the QR code on screen or hit the link in the description to buy me a coffee. So what exactly went down on August 15th? What made this specific flight so, so historic? Okay, so on that day, Joby's aircraft did something for the first time. Hey, good afternoon, Monterey Tower. Experimental 545 Juliet X-ray. We're out of Marina Flight of Two inbound for Monterey. A piloted EV toll air taxi flight, and this is key, between two public U.S. airports. Okay. From Marina, that's O-A-R to Monterey, M-R-Y, out in California. And crucially, it was all entirely within FAA-controlled airspace. Wow. Okay. So that's way beyond just, you know, flying in circles over a test field. Right? Yeah. This was real-world stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Precisely. It wasn't just a sterile test. This was an operational demonstration. Right. The flight itself was uh, 10 nautical miles. Mm -hmm. took about 12 minutes, and that actually included a five-minute hold for air traffic spacing. A hold. So they were actually sequenced by air traffic control. Yep. Showcased the whole sequence, vertical takeoff, shifting to wingborne flight, and then seamlessly integrating into that controlled airspace, talking to controllers, then the vertical landing. Okay. It really proved that they can operate away from their home base, you know, interact with the whole system. So how does that translate into, well, getting passengers on board eventually, and specifically, what does this mean for FAA certification? That's the big one. It's a huge step, a really big stride for their commercial readiness mm -hmm. and uh, their certification progress. Right. What the flight critically demonstrated was the aircraft's ability to properly integrate with existing air traffic control. Okay. It successfully sequenced with other planes at Monterey Airport, followed the exact same ATC rules as, say, a major airline. That integration piece sounds absolutely critical. It is, because the FAA explicitly requires this. You have to show your aircraft can operate safely in shared airspace, flying between multiple public airports. That's part of the certification process. So this flight, it provided absolutely vital developmental data for meeting exactly that requirement. Okay, so they've ticked a major box there. Uh, what's the next step then on this uh, very demanding path to full certification? Well, they've already racked up Quite a bit of flight time, over 40,000 miles flown across their whole fleet. Wow. And they've started final assembly on the first aircraft that's specifically intended for what's called Type Inspection Authorization Flight Testing, or TIA. TIA testing. What does that mean for us, the listeners? Uh, basically, it means FAA pilots will soon be getting into the cockpit alongside Joby pilots. They'll be directly flying and assessing the aircraft against the certification standards. So FAA hands-on, essentially. Exactly. They're planning to start those TIA flights early next year. The big goal, of course, is launching commercial service here in the U.S. Think cities like L.A., New York City, once they get that full FAA certification. So recapping here, we've really just looked at a, uh, a genuinely pivotal moment for these EV toll aircraft. It demonstrates real world capability, not just theory, and shows real tangible progress toward that FAA green light. Absolutely. It really underscores how this technology is maturing. It uh, clears a much more tangible path forward 
for what we call urban air mobility. Mm -hmm. Shows how these vehicles might actually fit into our existing skies. Right. It feels much less sci-fi now. And, you know, this leads us to an interesting final thought for you, our listener. Joby Aviation is a publicly traded company. So given this landmark news, a successful flight, do you think this achievement will help keep their stock price climbing? Will it continue that uh, vertical uptrend we've seen? Something to think about. Hey, good afternoon, Monterey Tower. Experimental 545 Juliet X-ray. We're out of Marina Flight of 2 inbound for Monterey. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. See you in the next video, guys. Peace out. Welcome to the Deep Dive. The future of air mobility, well, it feels like it's really picking up steam, doesn't it? And today we're focusing on one of the key players making some serious moves. That's right. We're diving into Joby Aviation. Our goal here is to give you a quick but really thorough picture of where they are right now. We'll be looking at uh, recent announcements, partnerships, tests, importantly, what's coming up with their Q2 earnings so you can really get a solid handle on their trajectory. Okay, let's jump right in then. Where do we start? This L3 Harris collaboration sounds pretty significant. It really is. Announced just on August 1st, Joby and L3 Harris are exploring basically a whole new class of aircraft specifically for defense. A new class? What are we talking about? It's a gas turbine hybrid VTOL, so vertical takeoff and landing, but with a hybrid system. Designed for lower altitudes, and here's a really key point. It's optionally piloted. Optionally piloted, so it can fly with a crew or completely on its own? Precisely both crude and fully autonomous. And what's fascinating is how it connects back to their commercial work. How so? Well, it takes Joby's progress on their commercial aircraft, their manufacturing know-how, and combines it with L3 Harris's deep expertise in what they call missionization. Missionization, like yeah. customizing it for defense needs. Exactly, adding specific sensors, effectors, you know, things that do something, communication systems, and, uh, Collaborative autonomy, making it work for specific defense roles. And this isn't Joby's first time working with the Department of Defense, right? Not at all. They've got prior experience. Remember that 561-mile uh, hydrogen electric flight back in June 24? And they also acquired X-Wing's autonomy division around the same time. So they've been building towards this. Okay. And the timeline sounds ambitious. Very. They're talking flight testing this fall fall 2025, and then operational demos and government exercises in 2026. John Rambeau from L3 Harris talked about long-range, crude uncrewed teaming. The vision is clearly smaller, smarter, lower-cost aircraft working together. Okay, so defense is a big piece. If you like our videos and you want to support our channel, you can buy me a coffee. Scan the QR code on screen or hit the link in the description to buy me a coffee. But how does this, or maybe their other testing, feed back into the commercial side? You mentioned Dubai. Right, the Dubai test flights. That's a perfect example of how rigorous testing, even if it has defense implications, directly helps their commercial plans. They confirmed this mid-year, reported around July 28th. And what were they demonstrating there? The core stuff. Vertical takeoff, transitioning to flying like a plane on the wing, transitioning back and landing vertically. But the conditions were the story. Yeah, you mentioned challenging. What did that mean? It means validating the aircraft in the market where they plan to operate. And ambient temperatures were pushing like 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, that's really hot. Crucial for checking things like battery heat, I imagine. Absolutely. Thermal management, how the aircraft handles in thin, hot air. 
It's essential data for passenger service reliability down the line. They had FAA certified pilots and mechanics on the ground evaluating everything, yeah. charging turnaround times, the whole process. So real world operational testing. Exactly. And they were working closely with Dubai's RTA, the Roads and Transport Authority and other regulators there. Plus, their partner Skyports is actually building the first vertiport at DXB, the main airport. Oh, right. And setting up maintenance, too. An MRO base. Yep. Maintenance, repair and overhaul. It all ties together. This experience directly informs their FAA certification process back in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Especially now, there's new FAA guidance on managing these powered lift aircraft, kind of like advanced helicopters, for frequent flights. It really underscores the scale of what they're trying to build, which uh, brings us neatly to manufacturing, right? You can't launch a service without planes. Precisely. Yeah. And they've made big strides there, too. Mid-July, July 15th, they announced an expansion at their Marina, California site. Doubled the footprint to over 435,000 square feet. Doubled. What does that mean in terms of output? The aim is up to 24 aircraft per year from that site. That's almost one every two weeks. Plus, hundreds of new jobs. And isn't there a big facility in Ohio as well? Yes, the Dayton facility. That's ramping up too. It's newly renovated, and it'll handle manufacturing and testing components. The long-term plan there is massive up to 500 aircraft a year. 500 a year, that's serious scale. Have they hit any recent production milestones? They have. Their sixth aircraft recently rolled off the line and got its airworthiness certification within just a week. And a key part of this is their partnership with Toyota. Ah, the Toyota connection, how does that work? They're really leaning on the Toyota production system playbook. Toyota engineers are actually integrated into Joby's teams, helping optimize the manufacturing process, focusing on quality and efficiency. It's all part of their vertical integration strategy. Okay, so lots happening on defense collaboration, testing, and manufacturing. Which leads us to the money side, the upcoming earnings call. Right, that's happening soon. Wednesday, August 6th, 4.05 p.m. Eastern Time. It's their Q2 2025 call. And just to set the scene, what were the big takeaways from Q1? Q1 was pretty strong. They highlighted hitting 62% completion on their side for FAA certification stages, which was record progress. They were also the first EVTEL company doing routine piloted transition flights. Financially, they ended Q1 with about $813 million in cash, not counting Toyota's investment, and brought in a new CFO, Rodrigo Brumana. Okay, so what are analysts expecting for Q2? And more importantly, what should we be listening for? Well, the consensus estimates are around $49,800 in revenue, still very early days there, obviously, and an earnings per share, or EPS, of about negative 19 cents. But the real focus, the key thing everyone will be zeroed in on is certification progress. After hitting that 62% mark in Q1. Exactly. Everyone wants to know, what's the update? How much further along are they? That'll be the number one thing analysts and investors are listening for. So bringing it all together, defense work, commercial validation in tough places like Dubai, massive manufacturing scale up. What does this all mean for the future, for how we might actually travel? How close is this, do you think? Well, it's complex, obviously, mm. but you can see the pieces coming together. It highlights just how much is involved, but also how tangible the progress is becoming. It feels closer than ever. It really does. And if you want to stay right on the pulse of this, especially the financial side, definitely mark your calendars. We are going to be streaming Joby's Q2 2025 earnings call live. That's Wednesday, August 6th at 4.05 p.m. Eastern. Oh, that's great. And we won't be alone. We're actually teaming up with the Hustle Brothers, you know, the fantastic YouTube creators who covered the EVTL space so well. We'll break down the call in real time with them. It's going to be a fantastic chance for an even deeper dive. That sounds like a must watch. Honestly, staying in form right now is crucial. This field is moving so incredibly fast, and developments like these are genuinely reshaping what transportation could look like. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. See you in the next video, guys. Peace out.